Hey, welcome to another live well training event. We are so happy you are here. Today we're going to be talking about parasitic draws. Excuse All right. Me. <clears throat> parasitic draws. Now, parasitic, you think of a parasite, right? Right, Something yep. that's sucking out your body and <laughs> drawing all the juices from you, right? Right. And it's the same thing on a car. Exactly. That's yep. what we're talking about. A parasitic draw is a draw on the battery. Right. Okay, from the current of the battery. And the next morning, the battery doesn't have enough charge to start the engine. Right. Okay, so that's the typical complaint is I park my vehicle and I go to start it the next day, don't start. Right. Parasitic dead, dead battery. Something. Yep. Either you got a bad battery, your charging mm -hmm. system isn't working, or you have a parasitic draw. Yep. And in this case, we had a parasitic draw. Exactly, yeah. Right, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today is parasitic draws. And you're gonna find out how much they've changed from the days when I was your age. <laughs> okay, they've changed quite a bit. That was a long time ago. Really cool <laughs> stuff. But before we get there, we gotta talk about this guy. All right. Wells Tech t-shirt. Okay, what does this symbol mean right there? And the first one in with the correct answer will win a t-shirt. So there you go. What does that symbol mean? Okay, the vehicle that we were working on is an O2 Ultima yep. with a 2.5 engine. And the complaint was just that. The battery went dead overnight. Yep. Okay, so we brought it in, right? Yeah. Brought it in. First thing we did was we did we checked the amperage drop. Right, yep. With everything turned off. Yep. Right? We waited, oh, approximately 20 minutes, and it was about 75 milliamp right. drop. Right, yep. Right? Okay. Now, the rule of thumb, and I think we've talked about this mm -hmm. uh, in prior classes, the rule of thumb is what? Under 50 milliamps is Under acceptable. Under 50 milliamps is acceptable. So mm -hmm. over 50 milliamps, you got a problem. Right. Yep. You got to start looking for things. Yep. Okay. And that's what we did. So the first thing we did is we started popping fuses. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Pop fuse, pop fuse, pop fuse. The only one that killed it. There was a 50 amp fuse that powered up the BCM. That would shut out everything probably. Just yeah. about everything. And uh, that was the only one that killed the draw. Yep. Okay. We got down to, I, thought, I believe it was 5 milliamps. 5 milliamps. Okay. So we're well below the 50 milliamp oh, sure. uh, uh, rule of thumb. So... At that point, we started looking at components that were on that line. Right. Okay, disconnecting things, trying to get it to, to drop below that 50 milliamp mm -hmm. level. And the thing that we came to was? There's a connector on the BCN that when we unplugged it, the draw went away. It was the main power feed and ground feed for the BCM. Right. So we took the BCM and we powered it up separately. Right from everything, turned off everything on the vehicle, powered it up separately, mm -hmm. and sure enough, we had that 76 uh, milliamp or 75 milliamp uh, draw. Right, yeah. Right? Disconnected it, boom, went away. Yeah. So we, we fixed the problem, right? Right. Got a used one, right? Yeah. Put it in, what happened? Car came back the next day. Yeah, he called me the next morning, he said, gee, thanks a lot for uh, looking at my car, but went out to start it, and Guess what? Didn't start. So if he was able to jump it, bring it back in. All right, now let's go stop right yep. there. Stop, okay? We are only human. We are. Right? And so are you, of course, yep. I hope. Anyways, <laughs> if you're not, let me know. You need to get baptized, right? <laughs> okay, never mind, it's a separate <laughs> joke. Anyways, uh, everybody makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. And we did not follow our own procedure right. that we preach. And that sometimes isn't so easy to do. Right. But if we would have, we wouldn't have had this problem. And the problem was, the first thing you have to do when a vehicle comes in is verify right. the complaint. Yep. Okay. You have to verify. You have to make sure that what he's telling you is happening on the vehicle at this point. Right. And that's the way it is. And we did not do that. Right. What we learned was this. <clears throat> 50 milliamp draw is a good rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
according to this vehicle and what we've learned today. So, so far, we're sticking with the 50 milliamp. Yeah, I haven't right? seen anything to change that. I haven't seen anything to change that. And yes, we were over the 50 milliamp drawings. Correct. Correct. Yep. And, the, and we thought it would take about 20 minutes, and typically that's right, 20, 25 minutes for mm -hmm. everything to shut down. Right. Because we, we did see it was at about 200 milliamps after about two or three minutes, it trickled down to 75. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think so everything's are, off. Right. Everything's shutting down. Yeah. Right. And we gave it another 20, 25 minutes. It was still drawing. Mm -hmm. So that is why we concluded that that was the draw. Right. However, we found out that it takes about an hour, one hour mm -hmm. for that thing to shut down. And uh, so there you go. There's the lesson right there. If you get one of these Altimers or if you're doing something like this, mm -hmm. be sure it's shut down. Right. We got to verify. And if right. we would have left this vehicle in the shop overnight with a meter on it, we would have came back the next morning, it would have started right up. And that is correct. And we would not have been able to verify that the draw was happening at this time. Right. Okay. It's just like a misfire or anything else. Sure. If it's yep. not misfiring, it's really hard to figure it out. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay. All right, so there we go. There was our mistake. That is what we did wrong. I think what we should do now is we should go over to the vehicle and show them what we did right. Right. Okay. Yeah, the car By was the, the way, after, <laughs> after we found out we did it wrong, we did go to Identifix and print it out a wiring diagram and we printed out mm -hmm. uh, common issues with this and so on and, but we'll explain that when we get over yeah. to the car but really good stuff and uh, I'm really happy it happened to us mm -hmm. because I don't want it happening to you guys that's what this is all about we're going to give you an example so it doesn't happen to you right okay so let's go over to the car all right let's go all work right, on let's it go over. okay all right, here's our nemesis. Yeah, this is our uh, O2 Ultima with the 2.5 liter in it. Right, right. Yep. Okay, came in, what did we do? Well, customer complaint was that it died overnight, so we hooked up our gauge, our meter, and did a parasitic draw test. So when it came in, we set it up to do a parasitic draw. Why don't you show them how we set it All up? All right, so with our meter, we go ahead and take our cable up, put it in the amp setting on here, set the meter for amps, Hook one, we go. hook one lead up onto our battery negative cable, right here, Yep. and then hook our other lead up onto the battery post. Now the meter's in between there. Anything that's traveling in or out of the battery has to go through the meter. Right, and the and jumper. Then, right. And the jumper, right. So if we take our jumper off right now, we can see what our draw actually is. Okay. So if we look see close we... at the meter, you can see right now we're at a 21 milliamp draw. Okay, is that that's well within spec? Yeah, spec is rule of thumb under 50. I looked all over the place, couldn't actually find a spec from Nissan, but um, but the rule of thumb is 50 milliamps. 50 and, milliamps. And we stick is with okay. that. Yeah, yep. We haven't heard anything better yet. Right. Right. And we oh. haven't seen anything actually over that. No, that or under that that uh, caused a, an issue. Right. Exactly. So uh, 50 milliamps is pretty good to rule of thumb. So right now in the car, everything's asleep. The car's been sitting here for well over an hour, hooked up like this. When it came in originally, we hooked up, and mm -hmm. we had about 75 milliamp draw. Right, and that's where we narrowed it down. The first thing you did is you pulled that 50 uh, amp fuse yep. out of there. Yep. Well, not the first thing, but one of the things you did. We pulled fuses and found out that this 50 amp fuse right here turned our draw, took our draw away. Right, down to this. Right. And uh, so then, we uh, looked what was on that circuit, yep. and one of the things that were on that was the BCM. Right. So we disconnected the BCM, and guess what? Draw one away. Draw one away. So then we took it out here, and we actually powered it up separately with a couple jumper wires, right. and sure, with nothing else connected to it, and sure enough, the draw was back. Right. Right? Okay, so we surmised this was the problem. Yeah. Got to use one, put it in, and the next day, he called up and said, gee, my car doesn't start again. Right. <laughs> so uh, we brought it back in. I'm sure that's happened to a few of you guys out there too. Right, and the, the whole problem was is we didn't actually leave the car sit overnight. Right, that was our, our first and uh, that was our biggest mistake mm -hmm. was not to verify the complaint. We thought that 76 milliamps was too much. Right. <clears throat> we narrowed it down to the cause. Mm -hmm. However, we learned later that it takes an hour 
yeah. a full hour for that BCM to time out. Right. We gave it about 25 minutes. We thought that was long enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Typically it is. We were at around 200 milliamps, I believe it was, and then it dropped off to like 150 right. and then so down to 75. Right, so it dropped down just like normal. Things and were shutting it, down. It stayed there. Right, stayed solid mm -hmm. for 25, 30 minutes. Right. All right, so that's where we made our mistake. We didn't actually verify the complaint. Right. Because if we would have just left it in the shop overnight, mm -hmm. we would have found out that the battery would have still had a charge the next day and started. So yep, it would have fired right the up. problem wasn't there even though we saw that draw. Right, so then being that the car came back the next day, our problem was intermittent. Right, right. So calls us up the next day, starts it up, or jumps it, brings it in, Yep. and th what did we do next? Same thing, put our right. meter on there, and it looked a little different this well, time. Well, we had a different result. Yeah. Okay, let's show them why the different result. Well, right. you're getting ready for that. Let's see if we had anybody answer the question, All right. right? And we do, we have uh, Joseph, we have Mob Kitty, my buddy, <laughs> and Paul. All answered the question correct, that is the battery symbol. So, uh, hey you guys, get, send me an email, there it is, mark.hicks at wellsve, and uh, we send you out your own Wells coveted Wells Tech t-shirt. And uh, by the way, I know some of you guys have got t-shirts already. Uh, we do have t-shirts for uh, children's sizes too, if you want to get your nephews in it and all that kind of stuff. So just let me know what size you want, we'll get it out to you tomorrow. Congratulations, you guys. That was absolutely correct. And it is not acting up right now, of course. Of course it's not acting <laughs> up. It's an intermittent relay. So what, uh, what Mike is doing right now is he's putting the original relay back into the, uh, the uh, fuse box that we had where we had the problem. And when it was on, we had a three amp uh, draw off of here. Not setting it off, huh? Well, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, before we could wiggle this thing around. When it came in, it was stuck on. We that's why it's it intermittent. And yeah. uh, that's why we were fooled, too, <laughs> is because it, uh, it was intermittent like that. Right. But when it came back in the next day, it had that draw. Yep. Right? And that's where we, uh, next thing we did, we saw that draw, and it's like, holy cow. Okay, so we went and looked at Identifix at right. that point. Yep. And what did Identifix tell us? Well, Identifix pointed us right towards the uh, AC compressor clutch relay. Right. So we went on, uh, said um, to swap the relay with a known good. That's the easiest test. Right. Well, sure. So yep. we swap it over, and the relay shuts off, and we're good to go. Our drain, our drain is gone. Right. Okay. Perfect. But now, what caused that relay to go bad? Right. And whenever you have a situation like this, where you have a failed part, mm -hmm. a part that controls current, something like that, even like a, uh, a blower motor resistor right. is a good example mm -hmm. that's controlling the current to that blower motor. When that goes out, many times it's caused by the part that it's driving, right, okay, exactly. that, it's, that it's controlling. And in this case, it's the air conditioning compressor. Right. Okay. So our next thought was maybe our compressor clutch is drawing too much current, right. causing our relay to get hot and mechanically stick together. And so our next step was, let's find a spec for that. <laughs> How much is it supposed to draw? Right. And well, good we, luck with that We one. looked and looked and didn't find any spec at all. And remember, we got all the time in the world to look. <laughs> it's not like you guys. We look right. hard, and it's not there. We so couldn't find it. So at that point, we went off of the rule of thumb where you want your current draw on your load to be less than half of your fuse. Right. So we looked. Uh, the AC compressor clutch is powered by a 10-amp fuse on this one. So we measured our current draw while the clutch was running and it was at 3.4 amps. Right, just what we were drawing when it was stuck on. Right. And so from that, we surmised that, you know, the, the clutch is probably good. It's, right. probably, it's not drawing over five amps, it's, it's an amp and a half below. Right. And so it's good. And so we've just replaced the relay, sent them out, and mm -hmm. it's been working ever since. And that was about a month ago. Right, and then we, we did also that. did verify in the diagram, if we pull that up here, that with the diagram, the fuse is powered directly from the battery. Right, if you want to bring up that diagram, there you go. Yep, you saw it for a second, there it is. Uh, disappearing diagram. <laughs> <laughs> and if you look up in the upper right hand corner, you can see that that is du fed directly from the battery. Right. So the key has no influence on it. Exactly, so if the relay were to stick, that air can, sending power right, down Right, that clutch is gonna stay on all the time. And that will definitely draw your battery down yeah. overnight. Uh, and it won't even take overnight. It'll right, probably yeah, take just a couple hours. Two or three amps, right. So uh, there you go. 
So anything else you'd like to add? Moral of the story, make sure you verify. Make sure you verify the complaint and yep. uh, you won't get stuck like we did. And the other part of it is if you do have a customer that has a parasitic draw, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to set that up with him ahead of time. Say, I may need right. your car for three days. Set the expectation. Right, expectation first right thing I gotta do is verify what's happening. Mm -hmm. And if it's not happening, I gotta make it happen right. in order to pin down what's going on. So yeah. you're gonna have to set that up with your customer ahead of time, you know, in order to do it right. Yeah, who knows? So, Maybe this this one might not have acted up for a week afterwards. We don't know. Who knows what could have happened? It was an intermittent, and it's not acting up now. Right, we so. put the new relay in, and it's been fixed ever but since. But I guarantee you, you catch our next broadcast, it'll act up. <laughs> okay? All right, okay. anything else you want to add? No, that's it. All right, there you go. Without you being there, we could not be here. We do appreciate it, and we'll see you again next time in the Wells Tech Garage. We'll see you then. Okay. We burn.